common problem in statistics is computing the event that at least one of a number of events occur. Now it turns out that sometimes it's harder to compute that question directly than using this following result here. This result here says like at least one of the k events occurs is equal to 1 minus probability that none of the k events occur. And this is easier to calculate often because there is only one, it's easy to calculate this guy, that none of the events occur, and then just do 1 minus it, then to calculate that this thing on the left hand side directly. Why? Because there are many ways that this thing could occur. For example, it could mean that just one occur, or two occur, or three occur, or four occur, all the way to all k occurs, okay? So a, for each one of those, I, I need a calculation. One occurs, two occurs, three occurs, and so on. Whereas here, that on the right-hand side, none of them occurs. There's only one way. That's when none of them occurs. None of each of the k components occur. And that's why this is useful. It's like a shortcut, if you if you would like to think it like that. I think um, a lot of you have seen this on the courses and stats because when I google it I get all this thrown at me so you're calling it the probability at least one event formula okay uh, you get some things which are quite amusing but you can see some people searching looking for help for homework probably because they're looking for very specific things probably at least one of because of three probably at least one ball is red uh, why not blue or something else this is and some things a bit bizarre probably at least one equation at least one calculator. I wonder if that's still talking about the same thing. In any case, I'm going to prove this result and then second going to give you an example. If you just want to look at the example, just go down to the description box and click on the time line. I'm going to be using this result today. Probability of an event A is equal to 1 minus probability not A. Okay, right. To make the notation more compact so I don't want to be right to do proof I don't want to be writing this every time so I just let's call that a subscript k okay like that or in compact form it means the same as this then just to reiterate this a subscript k denotes at least one or we could say at least or some of the ci's occurs some of the events ci occurs so that's just uh, how people say it now all we're going to do is substitute instead of a for a subscript k in there, a subscript k in there, and then simplify this right hand side to get what we want on the right hand side of the uh, of the result. And for that we need to know the following: that if we take the complement of not uh, a k, i.e. this, we get this by De Morgan's law. Just to remind you how De Morgan's law works. If I take the like for two events A union B, uh, not of these unions, then we, it's this. Okay, so that's all I've done just for more, more uh, just for k events. And now I substitute that into there and this into that, and that's the proof. So there you go, just right, just stating it and that by De Morgan, done. There is a case where we have experiments where the individual component of the of the events so each of the CIs are independent in that case we can simplify the right hand side further and I've done it right here in green all right so this simplifies to that using this fact that your probability of A and B is probability of A times probability of B right if we have two events and if A and B are independent then this holds it's just done it for K events so we can say that if each of the CIs are independent then this is equal to that. We can rewrite this using again probability A is equal to 1 minus probability of not A idea i.e. this is equal to that and so on if in the question we're given the probability of the events occurring and instead of the probability of the events not occurring as in this first formulation not, not occurring that they do occur yeah and this holds when the CIs are independent so that simplifies the calculation now let's to see how this thing actually works. Let's look at a question. Suppose three fair die, okay got the number three here so maybe that's what they're searching for. Three fair die are rolled. Let a i be the event that a six shows on the i die, okay for i is one to three. And then calculate probability a one union a two equal union three. Right, Q 
key thing is what does this A1 union A2, A union A3 mean? Think about it to yourself, pause the video. You might think about does it mean like one occurs or two occurs or three occurs exactly? Well, what does the meaning of, A, of AI, what is this thing? Alright, so continue on. Key point is, I want, yeah, what is the meaning of this? Well, call it AI means is the event that event six shows on the if die. So this means it shows on the first die, six shows on the second die, six shows on the third die. It means then that sum, or at least one, of the three outcomes is a six. Another way to put it, if it helps, out of the six rolls, there should be there could be one, two, or three sixes. So now we know what it means. We can see it's clearly we can use the result from above. So at least one six out of three is one minus no sixes out of three. Further, we could say that from the experiment we can safely assume that these outcomes are independent. So this simplifies to the product of uh, the events not occurring for each. Uh, tr uh, throw roll, and since the and this number is five over six, okay, because yeah, I uh, don't need to explain that. And these probabilities are the same, so it's cubed, and that's the answer. Done. Now you could calculate this left hand side directly. If you did that, notice you would be doing pro probability of one six out of three plus pro probability of two six out of three plus probability of three six out of three. Right, and add them up together because the AIs are mutually exclusive, and that is more steps than just doing this. And so again, we emphasize the point that sometimes calculating this directly is a bit of a headache because it involves a lot more calculation than using this formula one minus that non-events occur because there's only one way that that can occur, and that can simplify further if those events are independent because then it's just the product of the uh, events not occurring. So that's the probability of at least one event formula. I think I'm going to call this video that. All right. And uh, now you've got that. Maybe we can go. You can go ahead and solve the problem. At least one ball is red, or your equation, or at least one calculator, whatever that means.